Aum. Avidya kang shariradi drishyam budbuddha vatksharam etad vilakshanam vidyadaham brahmeti nirmalam A avidya kang up to the causal body sharira adi gross body etc drishyang perceived objects budbudavat as bubbles ksharam perishable etat vilakshanam separate from all these vidyat realize aham i am brahma brahman Iti thus nirmalam pure. The gross body up to the causal body created by avidya are perceived objects perishable like bubbles. Realize through knowledge that I am the spotless Brahman, completely different from them. <laughs> Hardly no, sir. I've changed so many times since this morning, you see. I do not see. Explain yourself. I'm afraid I can't explain myself, sir, because I'm not myself, you know. I do not know. Well, I can't put it any more clearly, for it isn't clear to me. You? Who are you? Well, don't you think you ought to tell me... first why oh dear everything is so confusing namaste so who are you <laughs> this is the question and it doesn't start from ramana maharshi I was reading last night in Shankaracharya's Upadesha Sahasri, a thousand instructions, that when a student approaches a spiritual teacher, the first thing the guru should ask him is, who are you? And based on the quality of the student's answer, then he knows how to instruct him. So if the chela says, well, I'm from a Brahmana family and I studied this and that and the other thing and blah, 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 then the teacher knows that he's not very intelligent. <laughs> but if he says, I am not this body, I am not this mind, I am, according to the scriptures, the self, Brahman. But due to being covered by ignorance, I have not realized it. Then the spiritual master knows this is a first-class disciple and can instruct him directly in the secrets of the Upanishads. So we should ask ourselves this question. Who am I? And analyze the answer accordingly. And how do we do that? Well, this verse explains. If we think that I am anything that is an object of perception, that's illusion. That's maya. That is wrong. And the reason it is wrong is because the objects of perception are separated from the self. That's why they're objects. The body, any of the koshas, huh? the anamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, manamaya kosha, vijnanamaya kosha, and even the anandamaya kosha. These different koshas, 
coverings or sheaths are different from the self. Why? Because they are perceived. One perceives even consciousness, isn't it? I perceive my eye consciousness, my ear consciousness, my tongue consciousness, nose consciousness, touch consciousness all over the body and all through the body. And of course, the thoughts in the mind. And I perceive the fact that I am conscious. That means that I am different even from consciousness. So, this has to be known. This has to be understood. That of all these things that I can perceive, none of them is myself. So we can finally answer the caterpillar's question. <laughs> Who am I? Brahman alone. The pure self, separate from all these coverings, separate from all these objects, ineluctably subjective, alone, inexplicable, inconceivable, beyond the mind and intelligence, beyond knowledge. Because, as the Upanishad says, how can one know that by which everything is known? That is the self. That is Brahman. Most people can't even pronounce Brahman. <laughs> Brahman. Huh? But this is the everything. This is the whole. This Brahman is not only the origin of everything, it is everything directly. But it is only pure consciousness without an object. This we call awareness. Awareness is different from consciousness. Consciousness always has an object, so it's dualistic. Awareness does not. It is only aware that it is aware. And that's enough, because that's pure bliss. So this is the reward. This is the objective. This is the aim of all this self-realization and sadhana, study of the Vedas and all this stuff. One has to get beyond the words to the practice and the realization. To live in Brahman is to live in silence, without the mind, without the intelligence, or plans, or desires, or any idea of who I am, or what I am but only being who we are and what we are. See, this is the real life. This is the liberation to which we all aspire. To be only myself and nothing else. Not to accept any upadis or coverings or limiting adjuncts that try to confine me to a specific definition of self. I am Joe Blow from Kokomo. <laughs> no, you're not. You are Brahman, the whole, the conscious entity alone. And it is because of you that everything exists. But all this stuff is not you and cannot be you because it is perceived. Thus, it is separate from you. 
So this is the crux of everything. This is really the point of the Vedanta or the Advaita teaching. You are not this body, not this energy, this life energy, not this mind or intelligence, even not this consciousness. You're not any of this. You are that which perceives all. Therefore, you are all, because you are the consciousness within all. This fact has to be understood, first of all, intellectually, through words, by reading the scriptures, studying the Mahavakyas that we talked about last time. And then it has to be realized. What does that mean? <laughs> well, like Alice said, I already changed so many times since this morning, I don't know who I am. What is that in us that never changes? That is the self. The pure awareness, the substrate of even consciousness. This is the self. This has to be known. In other words, realized. Not through words, not through philosophy, nor logic, nor even acceptance of the authority of the Vedas. Well, these are all good, and they're precursors to realization. But at some point, we have to say, all right, okay, I got it. And then sit down and do the work. Do the process. Enter into that nonverbal space and abide there. The Buddha used to tell his disciples, his senior disciples, those who've been around for a while, those who understand the teaching. He could tell by their questions, or actually he could just see their minds <laughs> and understand that, oh, this one is ready. What would he tell them? Go alone to the roots of a tree, the bank of a river, to a mountain, a forest, a field, an abandoned house, or anywhere where you won't be disturbed, and sit down and do what has to be done. And because they had understood his teaching, they knew what had to be done. What has to be done is to see oneself as separate from all these things that one perceives, up to and including emptiness. See, there is this vast space of nothingness, emptiness. It doesn't even have space. It's really, really nothing. <laughs> and that's the final step. When one can separate oneself even from nothingness, emptiness, shunyata, and see oneself only as the perceiver, as the knower, as the witness. This is not a trivial thing. This is a great achievement. And it is what makes a person a realized sage, a Buddha, one who is actually intelligent, one who is actually self-realized one who is actually liberated. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>